second. And it's been moved and probably supported to approve the bylaws as presented. Is there any discussion? I do have some discussion points. Sure. Um, as much as I really want a youth member to be present on this, and I know like school is just back in session, so we're going to start recruiting, I'm wondering if we need to make it not required because of the current turnout we've had. I really don't want that to happen. I'm just thinking more from a realistic level um, because I do want a youth member. That's one thought I have. And then the other thought that I did have also under the alternate member role, and maybe I'm missing this, but if one of us is like removed from moving or not showing up, um, will the alternate then take the vacancy position? And then will there be something to hold a new, a, a new um, decision for another alternate? Is that, is this, maybe I'm missing it, or maybe I haven't gotten that far yet? <laughs> yes, the alternate would, the first alternate would assume the open the vacancy. vacancy. Okay, mm -hmm. perfect. And then a new member would be appointed. Okay. Like a new alternate would be appointed, or the alternate would then move back? So the first alternate would take the vacancy, the second alternate would become the first alternate, and then we could find a new Perfect. member to become the second alternate. Awesome. Yep. Um, I, I think as far as the youth member goes, what was that? Oh, I saw what I asked as soon as I asked it, so then I was like, oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> hey, you never know. Sorry. I mean, <laughs> Yeah, you never know, and and these were new for us. We you know we took some of our our bylaws, but also had to find some new language for this committee. As far as the youth member goes, I will leave that up to this committee. But um, there's still time to find someone. Um, Commissioner Morris, um, I thought about the youth member as well, but. At the end, it says that we can amend the bylaws. So if it doesn't work out, I think that we will want to amend it at that point. That sounds good to me. And I'm wondering if it's, I'll ask you this question. So it's the intention and the desire of this body to have a youth member. Um, but is there a way for us to write it in the bylaws so that that is known, but it doesn't, but you don't have to keep amending back and forth when there is one and when there's not? Yes, that was, that's kind of where I was going from. Yes. So, so is there a way to, to say that so that that intention is known, yet we don't have to continually? Is there, is there that? Hardware or location that's addressed because I, I think you're. I think the bylaws. The makeup says, of the committee is what. I think the bylaws as they exist are. It just says the membership shall include the following. If for some reason you don't have a youth member, that doesn't invalidate the committee, nor does it um, invalidate any decisions that you make. It happens frequently that you can't. Um, you know, that you can't always fill a position uh, when you have another meeting. So you, you have to remember what your bylaws are. The best way to think of your bylaws are they're in your constitution. That might require some interpretation. The constitution doesn't necessarily cover every single thing that can possibly come up on the committee. It's intended to give you a an overview on how things should run and, and what you should do. Uh, but again, the way it's written, it says shall include. But, it, but again, if you don't have one of those members, or, or if one of those members doesn't attend a particular meeting, or even a series of meetings, it doesn't invalidate the, uh, the committee. You've said you intend to have a member that is a youth member. If you can't get a you know, get a member or that member doesn't attend regular meetings, it doesn't invalidate anything. So I think the way your bylaws are written captures what you're trying to accomplish. Um, 
by saying, that's my, our intent. We're going to do it if it works out. If it doesn't, that just is the way it is. Great. So I think we can leave it as it states based on that feedback. Any other questions, comments, concerns about the bylaws? All right. Looks like you guys are ready for the vote. All those in favor, we're going to do a um, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Gray? Yes. Commissioner Morris? Yes. Ms. McKinney? Yes. Ms. Settle? Yes. Mr. Vaughn? Yes. Mr. McKinley? Yes. Mr. Brent? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Fleming? Yes. It's a majority vote for yes. That was unanimous, was it? Huh? Correct. I didn't quite hear everybody. Yes. Okay. The motion has passed.
a property that is more than 20,001 square feet, and a property that will be used for development. <clears throat> Our current sidewalk program, this is how, how folks are eligible. A property owner is either by deed or mortgage or a recorded land contract. So you have to either own your property, not outright, you can have a mortgage, or the land contract at least has to be recorded. An owner's property taxes must be paid in current in all, on all properties in Calhoun County. You must not have, you must be free of code violations on all of those properties in Calhoun County. And as a landlord, you may purchase land adjacent to the rental property. The tenant and or resident that is living in your rental unit may not purchase that. So we have been discussing um, our policy um, within the office, and the sidewalk program is one of those programs that really needs some attention. And these are the these are some of the things that we have been talking about in those proposed possible changes. What is a sidewalk? Okay, so these are the new things that we're talking about doing at the landing and we wanted to be upfront about this so that as you make these decisions that you can can kind of think about about the possible changes or potential changes that will you know we would like to bring to the board before the end of the year for them to vote on but this is an area where you know the advisory committee can have influence you know how we're making these kinds of decisions and possible changes. So a property that is zoned residential and is a vacant property. So we have a, the zoned part of that, it meaning that it's an R1, R2, R3, it is actually zoned. Anything that we're on the commercial side, that is not a sidewalk. Those are T3s, T4s, um, business, whatever. Those are not considered sidewalks. Those are commercial properties. A property that is less than 20,001 square feet, we want to keep that the same. A property that is adjacent only to the side of the applicant's property. And the applicant's adjacent property must have a residential structure on it. That all stays the same. But what is not a side lot is a property that has an outbuilding, a garage or a shed. We just sell those at fair market value. It's not usually much more than a side lot but we have to consider that structure. Um, a property across the street, we, will, we are proposing that we no longer consider those as side lot, whether it's on, or those that are on the same block face. And what that means is that Eric lives here, there's another house, and he wants to buy the one that's over here, where Sinead is. That's considered the same block face. Okay, so where it's not right touching Eric's property, okay? A property that does not have a dwelling on it, that's not a side lot. Um, and multiple lot sales are under discussion. So those are some of the things that, that we are considering changes. So we wanted to make sure that, you know, if you wanted to talk about those and when the motion gets on the floor, that's fine. Um, and then the eligibility all stays the same. So in section one, you know, we can go through each one of these. So on, on those maps we had, remember we're talking about whether or not these properties should be considered a sidewalk. Okay? Be or I'm sorry, should be considered a sidewalk for the dip for potential rec for recommendation to the board that it's a land use um, that you're voting on okay so most of and you can see in these maps most of them are one-off there's not consecutive contiguous property um, there's some of them are there are a couple of them that are to the rear okay um, specifically in right here on right on to the uh, to the left of the screen there is a star well 
There, it is to the rear of the property. The adjacent property owner is in front of it, but it is on a corner. There's a lot of things that we, you know, we've considered in terms of those. But literally, there are some where there's so many other issues. So I can let you look at those maps. But some of the things that we're trying to consider is which site makes sense for the land use. So perspective to be dis the, the perspective to be disposed through the sidewalk program, the, the things that we looked at when Jamie and I went out in December were the lot characterization, the characteristics, so the topography. Is it, does it have a drop? Does it, is it loaded with like a forest? Is that potentially going to be something that someone is going to develop? Probably not, not unless you have a gob of money, okay? Um, is it a standalone lot? Are there building encroachments? So on a few of these, we had sheds on them that were not our sheds, they were the neighbor's sheds. So that's considered an encroachment issue. Um, the site use, how much, how, like, I literally had to go out to a neighbor and say, Okay, you, you want to buy this lot, but why? Well, come to find out, there was no, I could touch her, her, her electric lines. And she wanted to put a trampoline up for her kids. Okay, there is no way that is, that is anywhere close to being safe. So, the, so things like that, those were what we considered. If the neighbor is already like really having a difficult time and needs the space, yeah, that was those were the ones where we were like, this is a sidebar. That neighbor needs space. They have no backyard, they have all this. So so really the question is, is do these make sense to to as a safe, safe as a sidewalk disposition for land use? So most all of those items that are under consideration could be ticked off on every one of these lots in one way, shape, or form. So does anyone have any questions about that? So we're not talking about who's applied, but we're, we're talking about does it make sense that these be sold as side lots? So right now, we're just asking clarification questions of the staff or the staff report. Yeah. So that discussion yet. We are include we are or not including rear properties in these special cases. That is the those are up for those proposed or possible potential changes have not occurred yet. So the the rear, the block face, the adjacent property to the rear, those are still part of our policy. Those are all still part of our policy. We are, as a staff, considering making those changes because it doesn't often make sense to have someone own, like for, well, it's just, I'll, I'll give you a for instance because it's near your house, okay? So there's an owner that owns the property on Hancock and Greenwood. Well, we own the property right behind it, okay? It's a small lot. Does it make sense that they own this? In that consideration, it might, because it's on the corner and there's no other space for them to have. So in those, in some of those considerations, we have it on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay. Okay. So those changes have not been made yet, and that all gets voted voted on by our board of directors. Okay. So, but it is a chance for us to talk about that and to consider that when we are like making those changes. So what we're going to decide tonight is not going to exclude those properties? Correct. Okay, I just want to make sure that I didn't miss Yes, I have a question of clarity in regard to the lots. So if there is an empty lot that someone already owns, and then there is a lot next to it that's available, Correct. would that be considered an adjacent? That is an adjacent lot, yes. If it's attached to another lot. Correct, correct. However, in the potential changes, that, 
that lot adjacent, because I, I, can, I can almost, I know what you're talking about. So that adjacent property in our potential changes would need to have a house on it. Currently, we, they are currently, it is not, that is not in our policy. So you could purchase, or someone could purchase the lot that ne is next to the, their, their lot. Correct. Right now. Correct. On the new one, they would not be. Potentially, yes. We're trying to collect scenarios. So your question is, house, vacant lot, another vacant lot, and under your scenario, all zoned residential. Yeah, yeah, yes. yes, all of them are residential. We say the house, someone owns, and they also own the adjacent lot. lot. You know, the lot next to that is a vacant. Okay, and the house and the vacant lot are not attached. So they're separate from they are attached. They are, so they weren't attached, they are attached now. So that would be one parcel and then that would be a side lot. So that would be okay. But I could see a scenario where you have house, vacant lot, vacant lot. You know what I mean? Right. So that, that, and, and they make, so in other words, you're saying they need to be combined. The, the, the house and the lot that is owned by the same owner would need to be combined then they could purchase the CCLBA lot. Yeah, that's way into the weeds, but I think that's a good question that we need to think about. Any others? Any other clarifying questions about the staff report? Okay, then I'll entertain a motion to approve 7 b Do I? Yes, I'll move forward a motion. Thanks. Um, uh, what is this page? You can use the suggested one or one of your own, but it's about five pages from the back at the top. Yeah. Um, so a motion asking the WHN and PC2 advisory committee to discuss and recommend to the Council County Land Bank Authority Board of Directors that the 38 properties in Appendix A that qualify and make sense as sidewalks be designated as such in the land reuse strategy as well as approved for sale through the sidewalk program or eligible under the adapt a lot program. Settle support. So it was moved by Hannah Frentz, supported by Shanae Settles. Is there any discussion? I would like to change like the definition that's in here to what we talked about. I don't really like the side lots being across the street. That is not, yeah. Okay. That doesn't make sense. We can. We can. Oh. That's a, a policy change that would have to go to our board of directors. And so last month we talked about how this group can inform our policies. So we'll bring that back and we can do that um, as, that, as part of that discussion, and you can make that recommendation to our board of directors. Okay. So we can bring that forward to you next month. Our staff is in the middle of this rewrite right now, and it's a little bit messy, but we're hoping to discuss it with our board in October, um, and we can get your input in October as well. I think that would be feasible. Um, I'm looking at Amy. I think that would be feasible to get input. Um, and then when we take it to our board, we're hoping that we could potentially have it done by the end of the year. So, um, does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. And I also think they're very, very cheap. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Very cheap. Yeah. So, so, so <laughs> just for clarity for the record, um, a advisory board member is making that suggestion. Are we as a advisory making that suggestion to take that to the full board? So well, what Chris is saying is that we are going to bring the draft of the policy to the AC, okay. and then we can make recommendations from the AC to the board of directors. Okay, now I get it. Thank you. Any other discussion regarding the motion? 
hearing them at the minimal safe gate roll call vote on the motion. Commissioner Gray? Yes. Commissioner Morris? Yes. Sherry McKinney? Yes. Shanae Settles? Yes. Eric Bond? Yes. Dennis McKinley? Yes. Hannah Friends? Yes. David Brown? Yes. Cynthia Fleming? Yes. That's a unanimous uh, motion to approve. Now we're moving on to our next agenda item, which is citizen comments. We have a couple of citizens that are kind of working at the same time, but we'll ask if anybody has any questions, comments, concerns. Hearing none, we'll move on to board member comments and announcements. And I'll just put it out there. Please raise your hand if you want to be acknowledged for a comment or announcement. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, I just wanted to announce that I think I know that um, our organization Rise is going around Washington Heights neighborhood passing out ring doorbells. Um, part of the effort obviously is to bring down crime, violence in our community. <coughs> We're looking to be able to possibly, I don't know if I can talk with, um, we want to be able to put like signs, put like signs up to let people know that these are in our home. So they are deterred from doing Not certain good. things. Um, if they know that these are in our community. So I'm thinking about like even some side lots or maybe some type of space where we can put like actual like signs up. Okay. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it's not good. Put that on the um, table with the guy. I don't know if I can talk about it. Great. You just did. I think you want highly visible areas, like corridors. Yeah, yeah. So, and so, like, we're making sure that we're being intentional about certain areas that we're targeting. So, like, the Park Hill area, walkers and all that, making sure that we can hit a lot of those green woods. There's certain areas in Washington Heights to make sure that it has the green. We had enough funding to be able to purchase 100 of them starting off. We actually have 700 residents throughout Mountain Creek that signed up for it. But again, we have enough funding to we already purchased 100 of them and place them in Washington Heights first. So we're just trying to be intentional about where we put them at. Um, one of the biggest reasons why we started because the Naya Hollins was killed last year up, up on the panel. Marine was able to capture the shooting of the car that went past. So that the idea how about putting through our community. So you're just thinking about those different areas. Okay. We'll follow up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, David. Um, I do have a couple of announcements. One uh, or both are taking place on Wednesday the twenty first. And then there's another one but early on the Saturday. Um, there is a bench dedication ceremony for Dr. Elise J. Johnson uh, at 5 o'clock at Washington Heights on their um, walking path from 5 to 6.30, I think it was. No, excuse me, 6 to 7.30. And then there is a mayoral candidate debate on September 21st at 7 at Kingdom Builders Worldwide. So we can come up for that. And then this Saturday, there is the two things. There's a Life Happens Ministry workshop that's at Maranatha Original Church of God. That's at 9 o'clock to 4. And then there is a GOTV event that the Urban League is having. Does that think of one? That one's this Saturday. I think it's 12 to 4. Let me just double check. And you have that pop-up. Yeah, and if you're 
I think it's a ladies' night is the theme. And if you have a business, they're looking for you to, to be a part. And that's kind of based on um, African American women are the, one of the largest voting blocks in the country. And so that's kind of what they focus their efforts. So if you'd like to win for that, um, they're asking you to come out on Saturday at Urban League. And it's from 6 to 7.30. I'm sorry, I'm saying Saturday. It's the 20th, so it's Tuesday night, the night before the other two that I just mentioned. So Tuesday, September 20th, from 6 to 7.30. So I will be in a commission meeting at 7.30, but I'll try to stop there first. So, and the last thing, we did have our Neighborhood Planning Council 2 meeting last night, and um, that is just getting going again. So they're looking for members. Um, it's very closely tied to the work that we're doing. So um, it looks like right now the meeting is going to be on the second Tuesday of the month. So the, the meeting just before ours, the, the day before ours, uh, at the Department of Public Works from uh, 7 to 8. And so um, if you're interested in being a member, you reach out to um, city staff, uh, the community development department, or uh, Pastor Hooper is also taking names. This is a, a former chair that going to be electing all the officers at the October meeting. Um, and then as people come forward who live in Ward um, MBC2 who want to be members, those names will be put forth to the city commission to vote on to the neighborhood planning council. So if that is of interest to you, then make sure you get your information um, to one of those two or attend the next meeting on October 11th and make your interest known. All right? Yes. When was the, when was the Life Happens workshop? That one is on Saturday. And it is from 9 to 4, I think it was. This Saturday. This Saturday. The 17th? This is Thank you. <laughs> All right, yes, Janine? Um, when you mentioned replacing Janie, which she is irreplaceable, Janie, if you're listening. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it possible that we can get like a uh, position description. Absolutely. So then that way, like as Dennis was coming up with some great names, you could possibly kind of give somebody an idea like if there's something that you're interested in. So then that way when it's announced or something, we could kind of, you know, let them know um, when to apply. And we're hoping that you would you would be at like ambassadors <coughs> for us as well. We were gonna give it to so you. So you guys gotta share that with us. So right. you can yeah. send it to okay. people. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. 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 Was interested. And we do miss her so, 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 so much. <laughs> Absolutely. And then I'll ask the staff, if I'm not hearing any other comments from the advisory members if they have announcements that they have. I just have a more thing. The GIS training, you want to discuss that? Yep. So the GIS training we did not do on the 8th. We had two people. They, we can do it, um, and I can easily arrange for it to be a little bit ahead of this meeting if that is helpful for anybody and if i can get a show of hands that we would meet like at 5 15 here i will set it up just like this is and i will show you how to to go through the gis mapping system so that you have a better idea if you've got a laptop or something or if, even if you want to bring it up on your phone it is really difficult to do on your phone jamie and i like fought with it in december and I want to throw my phone out the window because I hated it so much. But you can do it. Um, so that is something. So if, if there are folks that are interested in that and want to just come a little bit before the meeting, is that something that may work? It will work for me. Um, other people? Me as well. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right. And then the other two, the, just the, there's, the, you got. So uh, uh, just a couple things. 
there are two handouts with houses on them. 182 Wood is on the market right now. This is a transform this home. So this house was owned by the land bank. It was purchased by a buyer who has brought it into compliance. So that is on the market. If you know of folks that are looking for a five bedroom, two full baths, 2,050 square feet, um, it, it is ready to go. So that's on the market. And Habitat for Humanity, where we are starting our community walk tour number four, or sorry, number two, is starting at 47 Hover. And we will start, this, this house has an, has an applicant who is interested in this house who has history in our neighborhood, but they have to do the 100 hours of volunteer work before they can be considered as a buyer for this house. And then after that, they have 400 hours to do. 200 has to be done by the buyer. So if it's a mom, then mom has to do 200 hours, but the other 200 hours can be through volunteers. So, but the big initial one is that 100 hours to be considered. So we, they are still open to looking for another, uh, for a buyer, even though they're trying really hard to work with this, this family. The other one is 276 Kendall, which we approved, oh, the, the board approved at their last meeting. That has been sold. So we should start seeing 276 Kendall coming into compliance. That's the one with the $50,000 foundation issue. Um, and we are, um, yeah. And then the commercial properties are also online. So if anybody is interested in commercial vacant property, they want to give me a call. Okay. Thank you. Any other stuff updates? All right. Then I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. Eric, go on seconds. Oh, seconds. <laughs> Single to second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion is carried. We are adjourned at 8.14 p.m. Thank you, everybody. I'm about to say, I've had nine for a while. We probably got like about 60 of them installed already. Okay.